Andrew Schultz and Charlemagne the God recently discussed on their podcast about Netflix's plan to end password sharing and the massive exodus in user base that the company saw as a result. Netflix's decision to crack down on password sharing was a controversial one, and it sparked a lot of debate in the online community. You can't piss off the base, man. Talk to me. Can't piss off the base. So basically what happened is everybody obviously shares passwords, and um, I think Netflix is coming close to running out of people to sign up. In other words, you know, they've reached the limits of people that have computers or TVs that can watch uh, things on Netflix. So what they got to do is find a way to increase revenue still. And they can do that by stopping people from sharing. So if one account has served, you know, six people, they can technically get five more people to sign up if you can't share passwords. Yeah. And uh, there was just a huge backlash on it. And, you know, they they basically rescinded. They're like, okay, we're going to let you share the passwords. And it was the right move to make uh, on their part. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. Because uh, to me, this is just like shutting down bootlegging. No, no, no. They 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 did the opposite. They what said you mean? they they were gonna stop you from sharing passwords, and then they said, "Okay, fine, you can share." Oh, y'all are idiots. Fuck that. Who's Netflix? Yeah, they didn't do nothing wrong. Yeah, but the thing is, that, in my opinion, they don't have something to hold over people's heads right now. This is not the time. For example, let's say Netflix was had Game of Thrones, and it's in the height of Game of Thrones. And episode three, they go, "Hey, we're gonna cut down this password sharing shit." Everybody's signing back up because they need to see the rest of the season. But right now, they're not mid-season on a show that's yeah, so impactful. Like, Netflix is Netflix at this point. Like, do you even give a fuck with Netflix? Like, what show did we... I remember the first time I bought a Netflix account is because everybody was telling me about this show, Orange is the New Black. Exactly. You need a show. Like, when Stranger Things comes back out, I think they should try it then. But after that, I didn't stop with Netflix because Netflix flooded me with so much content. Netflix is literally like when you're at home, like how you flip through channels. That's how we treat Netflix now. They felt, I guess, and they're, this is not like a gut company. They're going off of data. They felt that, I guess, when they uh, stopped people from sharing the passwords, not enough new people signed back up. So what's going to happen is they're going to have, let's say, for example, it's only one password per person. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's six people that were watching per password yeah. currently. If you go from six to one and those other five don't sign up, You've just reduced the amount of people that have viewed your show by six times. I get it, but they didn't give it a chance. If you respond immediately to backlash, you ain't even give people a chance to be they're like, you know what? They're not willing to risk it. Their, their stock's already down. They're in the worst, they're in the worst time to actually do this. They've been in the red forever. <laughs> like, like, no, that's not true. They were crushing it during COVID. They were? Oh, my God. They were oh, I didn't like know that. I thought, I thought Disney percentage. Plus popped up during COVID. This could... uh, Disney also, but they were just crushing during COVID. It makes sense. Everybody's home. They're Everybody's just home. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Uh, eh, whatever. I mean, listen, man. I guess. What you're saying makes all the sense in the world. I didn't even know that it worked like that. Because um, I would assume... I don't know. I thought that if you all sharing passwords, does that count as different views? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't fucking know. 100%. Man. I don't know. You can have different accounts on it. Yeah. They just want to see hours watched. And the more hours watched, the better. And if people are not watching on them, they're going to be watching on someone else. I mean, they're trying to compete with YouTube. I mean, that's just the reality. Of the well, well, bug me out when they said with a number of subscribers threatening to cancel their subscriptions, I don't think they're trying to compete with YouTube, bro. Oh, of course. Nah, just, they, you know why? Because here's the thing about YouTube, and I know YouTube does have YouTube Red, which is subscription-based. Man, when you got 55 plus million people paying 40 fucking dollars a month or whatever the fuck Netflix costs. 15 or something. Or whatever the fuck. Like, that's a different ball game. Like, it's a it's a different ball game when people are paying for a subscription and when people are watching something for free. Don't get me wrong. They're all competing for your time and your eyeballs. YouTube made more money than Netflix. They did? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. And more hours watched. Get, the, I believe the more I was watching, but also free YouTube, YouTube just made more money in ad revenue than Netflix. They this did? was the first time. But, but, ad, but, you, but Netflix don't make their money in ad revenue. No, no, they made more money in ad revenue than Netflix. Then YouTube made did a subscription. In subscription. Oh, yeah, because YouTube Red is done. They're not doing the subscription that you could do the YouTube, so you don't have the ads yeah. and that kind of stuff. But like, it's inevitable. You can't beat YouTube. It's just like trying to say like you're going to beat Google or something like that. It's not possible. But what what they're worried about is eyeballs, right? And if the time watched is going to these other platforms then less people are going to go, I need this subscription. Well, the problem is, uh, salute to YouTube. I don't think the problem is YouTube in this situation. 
I think the problem is all these other fucking streaming services. I, they're, they're also it's Disney Plus with fifty five plus million. It's HBO Max with fifty five plus million. Yo, Son, on HBO the low, is the goat, bro. On the low, Paramount Plus. Oh, so that's all it takes. It takes one show. It takes one show to put you, you on. You see what Yellowstone's doing, Paramount exactly. Plus, and yeah. that's and that's what Netflix, I think, maybe is starting to learn because what Netflix tried to do is replace television. They're like, we're just gonna have so much content, we're gonna flood the whole thing. We got different shows for everybody, and then YouTube came or uh, HBO came around, and they were like, we're just gonna continue making great shows that you have to watch. And you know what we do? We fucking watch. Euphoria comes around, everybody's watching. That's it. Last of Us is on right now. Incredible. Everybody's fucking watching. YouTube's got it locked. And then also, uh, Dis- what's that? HBO. HBO. Oh, sorry, sorry. HBO. HBO kept doing that. HBO is the fucking goat when it comes to scripted. Nobody comes close. I, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not. And then not Paramount not Plus that. came out with Yellowstone, and then the whole world watched Yellowstone, and all of a sudden it put a streamer all the on the Yellowstone map. Yellowstone spinoffs, the, which are incredible. That dude Taylor Sheridan's killing. He's him. a genius. He did Tulsa King. He's doing this shit with Jeremy Piven. I said this months ago on this podcast, but I don't know if people pay me attention because nobody pays me attention until, you know, until you're right. right. Until I'm right, but. The, the the Netflix model wasn't sustainable. The binge watching. It was something that we all loved, but you literally shoot your load, bro. Yeah. Like if, if I give you a season of a show and you can watch all 12 episodes in a night, I have I have nothing. But if you're HBO and you give me 12 weeks mm-hmm. of euphoria, mm-hmm. all you got to do is give me three of those a year and you covered the whole year. Exactly. It's about owning the conversation. We were That's talking it. about this. And that's what HBO... Now, the thing is, in order for someone to wait a week to come back to a show, you need to create really good shows. Absolutely. And what Netflix has gotten by with is creating not as good shows, but... Giving you the binge shit. They give you a cliffhanger, so you just keep watching. There's a lot of shows on Netflix that people wouldn't watch if you had to wait a week. But HBO is like, we're just going to give you the best fucking show. Dude, HBO's percentage, I'm dick riding HBO, and I'm happy about it. I don't even have no shit on HBO. This is just how fucking amazing they are. The percentage that they bat, I've never seen this before. Everything is a hit. House of Dragons comes on. Bang. Well, it's because they take their Last time. of Us. Bang. Euphoria. Bang. It is historically. This isn't like... For years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sopranos. Yeah. yeah. The Wire. Yeah. I mean, it's just non-fucking-stop. Oh. And it, it really, they invest in creators. They invest in great showrunners, great writers, and they execute. And they also invest in talent. Like, if you notice with HBO... If they like you as an actor, you pop up in their other shit too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, you yeah, almost yeah. become like a star of HBO. Yeah. Remember when we were doing all the MTV shows and we would just do five different ones? Absolutely. You become like a star of the network, but they fucking got it locked. And I think at the end of the day, that's what people want. They want stories that they can follow. They don't need all the content in the world, which is what Netflix is doing. They want Stranger Things. That's what Netflix did great. Followed yeah. and, and then you create cultural moments with that. So I think Netflix should shrink the amount of things they're producing and just focus on great quality. According to Schultz and Charlemagne, the plan was aimed at preventing people from sharing their accounts with friends and family members, which Netflix saw as a threat to their revenue. However, the plan had unintended consequences, as many users who were sharing their accounts decided to cancel their subscriptions instead. Schultz and Charlemagne noted that this resulted in a significant drop in Netflix's user base and caused the company to reconsider its stance on password sharing. The two hosts also discussed how Netflix's strategy of releasing entire seasons of their shows all at once has impacted the staying power of the shows in the long term. They noted that while the approach has made the shows more bingeable, it has also resulted in a rapid decline in viewership once all the episodes have been released. Charlemagne pointed out that this approach has made it harder for shows to maintain their popularity over time and to build a loyal following. He said that this is because viewers are able to consume all the episodes of a show in a short amount of time and then move on to the next one, which doesn't allow the show to have a lasting impact on their lives. Andrew Schultz added that the release of entire seasons all at once has also made it more difficult for shows to generate buzz and anticipation, which is important for building a dedicated audience. He said that viewers are less likely to discuss and share the show with their friends when they have already consumed all the episodes. Andrew Schultz and Charlemagne the God also discussed how Netflix's competitors, such as HBO, could take advantage of the company's current position. 
With the recent exodus of users from Netflix, it presents an opportunity for other companies to gain market share and attract more subscribers. One way that HBO could capitalize on this situation is by offering a more traditional approach to releasing shows. Instead of releasing entire seasons all at once, they could opt to release episodes on a weekly basis, allowing viewers to experience the show over a longer period of time and build a more dedicated following. HBO could also differentiate themselves from Netflix by offering more exclusive content, such as original series, movies, and documentaries. By doing so, they could provide a unique viewing experience for their subscribers and attract new users who are looking for something different from what Netflix has to offer. Another way that HBO could benefit from Netflix's current position is by offering a more personal and customized viewing experience. For example, they could offer a recommendation system that is tailored to each individual subscriber's viewing habits and preferences. In conclusion, Andrew Schultz and Charlemagne the God's discussion about Netflix's plan to end password sharing and the impact it had on their user base highlights the importance of understanding the unintended consequences of business decisions. They also discussed how Netflix's approach to releasing entire seasons all at once has impacted the staying power of their shows, and it is a reminder that there are trade-offs to every strategy. Netflix's experiment with password sharing and bingeable content serves as a valuable lesson for other companies and a cautionary tale about the impact that business decisions can have on the user experience.